Montana is earthquake country. In Montana, we're fortunate enough to enjoy views like this every day. Our beautiful state is synonymous, literally, with mountains. What many people don't think about when enjoying a view like this, however, is the inherent danger that can accompany it. Many of the mountain ranges in western Montana were formed by repeated slip-along faults, what we know as earthquakes. Though most of the faults are quiet now, they're far from inactive and someday may unleash a powerful earthquake. In fact, Montana is one of the most seismically active states in the U.S. This video will present the dangers of an earthquake in Montana and the precautions you can take to protect your family and yourself. This information will benefit all Montanans, from Yak to Alzada and anyone who might find themselves in earthquake country, because you never know when the ground will shake again. Since records have been kept, Montana has experienced numerous destructive earthquakes, a belt of potentially active faults, frequent small earthquakes, and occasional large earthquakes, known as the Intermountain Seismic Belt, traverses western Montana. Most, but not all, of Montana's earthquake activity occurs along this belt. Montana experienced several large earthquakes in the late 19th century. These earlier earthquakes were felt strongly and caused minor damage, but as Montana continued to grow after the turn of the 20th century, earthquakes had far more substantial impacts on the increasing population and economy. The first significant shock, a magnitude 6.6, .6, occurred in the Clarkston Valley north of Three Forks on June 27, 1925. Towns in the surrounding area, including Manhattan, Logan, Three Forks, Lombard, and Bozeman experienced shaking that damaged numerous brick buildings. A magnitude 6 aftershock followed 49 minutes later, and an additional 74 smaller aftershocks followed through the end of August. Numerous landslides and rockfalls along the Missouri River interrupted rail traffic for two weeks. The region continues to be seismically active. In late 1935, a series of quakes shook Montana's capital, Helena. The largest was the October 18th event, a magnitude 6.3. This largest quake was felt from Washington and Canada to Wyoming. Telephone, telegraph, and electrical services were halted for over an hour. Two people were killed due to falling debris. Over 300 buildings were damaged, with over 200 brick chimneys crumbling and falling. The newly completed Helena High School suffered severe damage. The total damage was estimated at over $4 million, or $69 million in 2014 dollars. Frequent shocks followed the October 18th event, and a magnitude 6 earthquake struck on October 31st, further damaging already weakened structures and killing two more people. An entire wing of Helena High completely collapsed, and the school that was opened in August of that year was a total loss. The worst damage occurred in the brick-built business district. In all, 60% of the buildings in Helena suffered structural damage. Many people associate faults with physical geography, such as ridges, mountains, and canyons, but this isn't always the case. On May 15, 1909, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake struck near Scobie in northeastern Montana. This unusual earthquake was felt throughout eastern Montana, but caused no serious damage. However, on June 24, 1943, at Freud, Montana, in the far northeast portion of the state, an earthquake estimated in magnitude 4 range shook the ground and cracked a concrete grain silo so seriously that grain spilled out. Montana's largest, most famous, and deadliest earthquake occurred on August 17, 1959 at 11.37 p.m. The magnitude 7.3 quake changed the face of the Southern Madison Range and the state's attitude on earthquakes forever. During what's now known as the Night of Terror, the ground beneath Hebgen Lake suddenly tilted, creating a large wave that washed back and forth across the lake and overtopped Hebgen Dam at least three times. Hebgen's earth-filled dam was seriously damaged, but didn't fail. Meanwhile, downstream, over 80 million tons of mountainside crashed down on a Rock Creek campground overlooking the Madison River. Cars, tents, trailers, trees, and people were buried or swept away. Over a mile of river and Montana State Highway 287 were buried under over 300 feet of debris. In less than a minute, 28 people lost their lives. A new lake formed, appropriately named Earthquake Lake, and within a matter of days was nearly 200 feet deep. The strong shaking disrupted many of the thermal features in adjacent Yellowstone National Park, including the famed Old Faithful Geyser. The damage in this sparsely populated region of Montana was estimated at over $11 million, or $88 million in 2014 dollars. This event, though one of several in the 20th century, was the most important as it let Montanans know this can happen here, and even in a sparsely populated region, can have severe consequences. So what can you do before an event happens? The first thing to consider are the supplies you and your family will need to survive on your own for up to 72 hours. The most basic is water, 
one gallon per person per day with a minimum three-day supply. Store it in a cool, dry, but accessible place. Keep in mind that children, nursing or expecting mothers, elderly, and sick people may need more water. Also, take any emergency medical situation into account. And don't forget your pets. Store at least a three-day supply of non-perishable food. Oh, and don't forget the can opener. For more information on what to include in a complete emergency kit, visit www.ready.mt.gov. Before an earthquake even strikes, here are some things to consider. After preparing a basic emergency kit, make sure your family knows where it is and have a plan in place. In earthquake country, it's a good idea to secure shelves to walls. The last thing you need is a heavy object coming down onto your head. Repair defective or worn down electrical wiring and any leaky gas connections in your house. Install flexible pipe fittings in a code compliant manner to avoid gas or water leaks. If possible, secure your water heater, refrigerator, furnace, and gas appliances by strapping them to the wall studs or bolting them to the floor. Most importantly, prepare your family. Make sure your family talks about safety and communication in an emergency situation. It's also a good idea to practice drills until they're all comfortable with the procedures. Designate a contact for all family members and identify a contact such as a friend or relative who lives out of state for household members to notify when they're safe. For training and emergency preparedness, contact your local emergency manager, the Red Cross, or a search and rescue organization. These groups are always looking for volunteers and provide disaster preparedness training to local communities. Also visit www.shakeout.org Montana for more information on earthquake drills. Now that you're prepared, here's what to do when an earthquake strikes. The first thing to remember is this, stay calm. Many earthquake deaths are caused by debris falling onto people who panicked and fled from a relatively safe area. Next, there are three things you must do. Drop. Get low to prevent injury from falling down. Cover. Find shelter beneath a sturdy object, such as a table or a desk, and cover your head and neck with your arms. In older buildings, where heavy plaster disconnected from lath is a concern, taking shelter in a doorway will work if better cover isn't available. An indoor corner will serve as well. Stay away from windows, light fixtures, or any other object that can fall and cause injury. Hold on. Grab onto your shelter for support. Stay where you are until the shaking stops. Make no attempt to go outdoors until the earthquake passes. So, when the shaking starts, there are only three steps to remember. Drop, cover, and hold on. If you find yourself outdoors, stay there. Do not attempt to enter a building. The greatest danger exists directly outside buildings, at exits, and alongside exterior walls. Many buildings in the business districts of Montana's towns and cities are built from brick, which can easily crumble and fall. Move away from buildings, streetlights, utility wires, and trees. If you're a lake, get away from the shoreline and move to higher ground if possible. Though Montana obviously isn't at risk for tsunamis, a large wave in a lake can be equally devastating to the immediate area. If you're on a hillside, take cover below a sturdy tree if possible and watch for falling rocks and debris. Once you're in the open, stay there until the shaking stops. Ground movement during an earthquake is seldom the direct cause of death or injury. If you're in a vehicle, stop as quickly as safety permits and stay in the vehicle. Avoid stopping near or under buildings, trees, overpasses, and utility wires. Proceed cautiously once the earthquake is stopped. Avoid roads, bridges, or ramps that may have been damaged by the earthquake. If you're in a canyon or on a mountainous road, keep alert for falling rock or landslides. If you find yourself trapped in a building, again, stay calm. Do not light any open flame in the event of a broken gas line. Do not move around or kick up dust. Cover your mouth with a handkerchief or clothing if you can. Tap on a pipe or wall so rescuers can locate you. Use a whistle if one is available. Shout only as a last resort, as shouting can cause you to inhale dangerous amounts of dust. After the shaking stops, check your surroundings to make sure it's safe to move, then exit the building in the quickest and safest way available. Expect aftershocks. These secondary earthquakes are usually less violent than the main quake, but can be strong enough to do additional damage and are most likely in the first hours and days following the earthquake, but can occur weeks or even months later. Montana is famous for its sense of community, with neighbors looking out for one another. Remember to help your neighbors, as taking steps now can go a long way in protecting you, your family, and those around you. Talk to your family, friends, and colleagues today, and share this video to make certain that all Montanans are ready for when the ground begins to shake. Montana may be in danger from earthquakes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.